Welcome to Watch Chat, where we chat about watches and other facts of life. Grand Seiko has recently released a new limited edition, and that's the SBGE267, which I think it is perhaps one of the best GMT GS has made. The SBGE267 is a GMT that is limited to only 140 pieces worldwide. This robust sport watch is exclusively sold in Malaysia, Brunei, Hong Kong, Macau and Singapore. What's so special about this watch isn't just about the colour. But let's first talk about its colour. Like most of the other GS watches, the dial and bezel here is also inspired by nature. A colour that is most commonly used on straps is now embodied into its persona. According to Grand Seiko, brown is the colour of the earth giving people a sense of simplicity and stability, which is what most people need these days with their hectic lifestyle. The dial has a brown sunburst effect. The same brown can also be seen on the rehaut and the bezel. I'm glad that they have chosen to use champagne gold on the hour, minute and second hands and the indices to match the brown. Imagine them using yellow gold. What's worse, stainless steel. The indices are all applied. Same goes with the GS logo, which is also champagne gold. The indices for 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10 and 11 are baton shaped with lines on the surface, chamfered on four sides with polished finishing. The indices on the 3, 6, 9 and 12 o'clock has a more blunted spear shaped design that also has the lines on the surface chamfered on three sides with polished finishing, with the 12 o'clock being a larger piece with loom applied on them. The hour and minute hands shares the same blunted design with loom applied to them. The GMT hand has the white arrow design that has loom on it. The writings on the down and the minute markings on the chapter ring are in white. The brilliant use of the rehaut to mark the 24 hours time, which is also in white, cleans up the down. The 72 hours power reserve indicator is located between the 8 and 9 o'clock using also a champagne gold hand and applied champagne gold indicators. Yes, those four indicators are also applied. The space between these four indicators stipulate the three days of power reserve using white, grey and black. The integration of the brown, champagne, white, grey and black is just perfect here. I couldn't get enough of the colour that I had to bring it outside to see it under natural lighting. I couldn't get enough of it that I ended up getting one for myself. The brown bezel has a sapphire crystal layer on it. Between the brown bezel and the rehaul is a mirror finished stainless steel ring that angles inwards to the box shaped sapphire crystal which sits inside the bezel Hence, you will see it rather flat from its side view. The crystal here has an anti-glare coating. The watch is measured at 44mm in diameter, 14.7mm in thickness, and 50.3mm in length. The front of the case is brush finish. The side of the case has a polished finish, which brings me to my second reason as to why this watch is special. The quality on this watch is amazing. The Zerasu polish never ceases to amaze me. The side profile of this watch has a huge real estate showcasing the quality GS is famous for. The case shape here curves upwards giving it a smaller surface resting on the hand but with a bigger display of that gorgeous brown. The height of the bezel is rather shallow. However, the coin edge design and the brilliant upward curves of the bezel makes it effortless to get a grip on it and to rotate it. The 72 clicks on the bezel isn't loud but feels rather firm and secure. The crown on the watch is located at its 4 o'clock, which is a good place to have for such behemoth to prevent it sticking out and hurting your hand. The crown has a GS logo engraved on it. The crown here is pretty small for its size. 
Because it nestles in the case, it makes it rather difficult to unscrew the crown. Once you have managed to unscrew it, everything becomes easy to adjust. That is of course until you decide to screw that crown back in again. At position 1, this changes the hour hand leaving the second hand running. At position 2, this stops the second hand and allows you to change the time using the minute hand. The date can be changed using both position 1 and 2. When using the minute hand to change, the date starts changing at 11.10pm with a quick snap at 12am. The lug width here is 21mm. The lugs here have holes for easy change of bracelet. The bracelet has a 3-piece link with brush finishing, save for the middle link which has its side polish finish, which is also Zeratsu, giving it more blink. The side of the watch is polished finish with removable screw pins instead of pin sleeves. The clasps here is a 3-4 clasps with push button release where the GS logo can also be seen on the clasps. The bracelet here is very light even though it's stainless steel. The back of the watch is polished finish with a screw case back that is polished at the side and brushed in the center with the lion emblem on it. The back also has a limited edition and its LE number crafted on it. The watch is powered by the 9R60 caliber movement that has 30 drills and a 4800 mp of anti-magnetism. The spring drive movement, which is considered one of the 15 wonders of the world, has an accuracy of plus minus 15 seconds a month. This watch has a 200 meter of water resistance, which makes it more diveable than the Omega Aquaterra. Now, let me address the elephant in the room, and that's its thickness. I know what you're saying, it's 14.7mm thick. Firstly, to me the design and the case size of this watch makes it unmistakably a rugged sport watch. It is something that you would choose to wear on a more casual occasion. Hence, it being sizable is probably acceptable here. Secondly, the use of a more toned down but yet distinctive colours make the watch look rather elegant and classy which makes it acceptable to wear it with a suit. Thirdly, although it's measured at 14.7mm in thickness, it doesn't feel like a 14.7mm watch. It wears the same as my Seiko Sumo SPB103J1 which has a 12.9mm thick. Here is a side comparison of both these watches. If you've missed my review on the Seiko Sumo, I'll put a link in the description below. So what's my take on this watch? Although on paper, the watch looks thick, but it really doesn't feel thick at all. This is probably due to the smart design of the watch. I really like this piece. It's really a wearable piece which I can wear it in the boardroom or my Sunday brunch. Not only is it a semi-dive watch, it is also a GMT watch for reading 3 time zones. And that's because the bezel also has a 24 hour time zone underneath that sapphire crystal. Last but not least, you really need to see this watch at night. I really love the brown, it's really unique. Because this is a limited edition watch, the watch comes with this box here. This here is GS limited edition beer glass which apparently changes colour depending on the temperature which is exclusive for this watch. Anyway, this is my initial thought on this watch. I'll probably do another review on the watch after having some wrist time with it. If you like this kind of video, please like, share, comment, subscribe and hit that notification button to support me and I'll really appreciate it and promise to upload more videos like this. Until the next one, thank you for watching.